So today's our topic is engineering mechanics method of resolution of forces. So let us see how to consider the resolution of forces. Suppose I am taking two forces that is nothing but one force is in x direction let it be force in horizontal direction and let it be other force be Fy that is nothing but force in y direction. Now one more force that is nothing but the inclined force. So this inclined force we call it as resultant between the two forces fx and fy suppose if i am taking this force let it be fx and this force let it be fy and this force be capital f so now in order to move this a force f in x direction as well as y direction we need direction of resultant that is nothing but I'm considering it as angle theta that means this force F can move in both X direction as well as in Y direction that means whenever it is moving in X direction so it will move in this way whenever it is moving in Y direction it will move in this way so from this what we can write suppose if I am considering a triangle like this so you can clearly observe that this force is nothing but force F this is nothing but fx and this is nothing but angle theta so from this triangle we can write it as cos theta is equal to adjacent side by hypotenuse side so that is nothing but fx equal to f into cos theta so this is the force in x direction in the same way if i consider this triangle so we can write it as fy equal to f into sin theta so suppose if i am considering this is the equation one and this is the equation two suppose if i write squaring on both sides in first equation we are getting f square into cos square theta and if i square on, on both sides on f y square that we get f square into sine square theta so now if i add this both components so we are getting fx square plus fy square is equal to f square into cos square theta plus sin square theta so that is nothing but fx square plus fy square is equal to f square into cos square theta plus sin square theta is nothing but one so that means f square is equal to fx square plus f y square so if i send square on the right side so it will become f equal to root over fx square plus fy square so this is nothing but resultant of the force in x direction and y direction so similarly if we want to calculate the direction of resultant so from this triangle so we can see that this is the force fx this is the force f so this one we say it as force fy so that means if i take fx and fy so the direction of resultant will be tan theta is equal to opposite by adjacent side that means so we can write direction of resultant so direction of resultant is represented with theta so direction of resultant it can be written as tan theta is equal to opposite side by adjacent side that is tan theta equal to fy by fx so we can calculate theta equal to tan inverse of fy by fx so in this way we used to calculate the direction of resultant so after this now let us discuss how to resolve the forces where in the four different quadrants suppose if i want to take the forces in four different quadrants suppose if i am considering so this is with respect to y axis and with respect to x axis suppose if i am taking suppose if i want to take now one force here that is in the first quadrant so let it be force f1 in the same way i am considering one more force here force f2 in the same way f3 in the same way f4 suppose i have taken four different forces in four different quadrants suppose in order to move these forces i need the direction of resultant suppose if i am taking this force as f1 so let it be somewhere theta 1 suppose this is the force f2 suppose i am taking angle over here this is nothing but 
theta 2 so this is the force f3 suppose if i am taking angle here so this is theta 3 suppose this is the angle f4 suppose this is the angle theta 4 so how to represent these forces so first of all we have to understand very clearly that whenever the force is in inclined direction that represents that the force moving with respect to both horizontal direction as well as vertical direction so we can understand clearly that suppose how we are using in the graph sheet so in the graph sheet generally how we are representing positive and negative signs in the same way now i am considering here once have a look here suppose in the graph sheet we are saying that this all terms moving towards right side are positive and the axis upwards is represented as positive and the axis left side is represented as negative and axis downwards is represented as negative so in the same way if we consider whenever f1 is moving over this axis that means this axis this will be positive x-axis so whenever it is moving in this direction we are saying that this is positive y-axis so in the same way now we are going to represent all the forces in both horizontal direction as well as direction so now here we have four different quadrants of forces so here we have to apply the equilibrium conditions so what are the equilibrium conditions for this is so first of all we have to consider sigma fx equal to zero so sigma fx equal to zero represents that sigma is nothing but sum f is nothing but force and x is nothing but direction so this represents sum of the forces in x direction so that is nothing but we can write it as simply sum of the forces in x direction equal to zero similarly sum of the forces in y direction equal to zero so that is nothing but y direction equal to zero so now if we want to calculate first one sum of the forces in x direction equal to zero so how can we calculate by this let us see now force f1 i am moving towards x axis so it is moving towards right side so that is nothing but positive so wherever the angle theta is with respect to that axis so we say that is nothing but cos that means here theta is touching on the x axis so it is represented by cos theta 1 so that means plus f1 into cos theta 1 so first equation we can write it as f1 into cos theta 1 in the same way if i go next quadrant so this one moving towards left left side so you can write f2 but here angle of reference is towards the y axis but not the x axis so wherever it is not touching that reference line so we are taking it as sin theta so that is nothing but minus f2 into sin theta 2 similarly this one that means it is moving towards this side so from this graph this is nothing but negative so you can write minus f3 sin theta 3 similarly last one this is nothing but f4 moving towards this side so that is nothing but positive so angle is also touching towards the x-axis so plus f4 into cos theta 4 is equal to 0 similarly sigma fy equal to 0 so in the first quadrant if we observe f1 is moving towards upwards so the opposite angle nothing but sin theta 1 in the second quadrant if i write that is nothing but f2 so opposite angle that is cos theta 2 so this is moving towards this way so this is positive this is moving towards this side positive similarly if i take f3 towards downwards it will be negative that means minus f3 into cos theta 3 similarly this f4 so that is nothing but minus f4 sin theta 4 is equal to 0 so based on the given values we will find the f1 and f2 whatever they are asking suppose sometimes they will be giving all the data so if they given f1 theta 1 f2 theta 2 f3 theta 3 and f4 theta 4 so simply what we can find we will find the sigma fx equal to so and so value suppose the values are given we will write only sigma fx equal to this equation if values are not given we will take sigma fx equal to 0 and sigma fy equal to 0 and we will equate and we will find the values suppose if all the values are given just we will write the 
sigma fx equal to how many newtons and sigma fy equal to how many newtons now the resultant will be become f equal to root over sigma fx whole square plus sigma fy whole square so based on this we will get the force in newtons in the same way if you want to calculate the direction of resultant so simply we will calculate tan theta is equal to sigma fy by sigma fx so theta equal to tan inverse of sigma fy by sigma fx so in this way we will calculate the method of resolution of forces okay